get started cooking here in a few minutes, but as it turns out, we are new to this stove. I've mentioned it a few times now. It's a glass top, but it just does not want to get clean. It's kind of hard to see from there, but there's like a permanent ring that goes around each of the two burners that we use all the time. I will try to get over here and I don't know if you can see that or not, but yeah. So what I want to do today is try a little trick, see if it works. I have never tried this before. They say that it works great, but we are going to give it a go. Basically, all we're going to do is put a little vinegar on it. And yeah, this is Ruby's vinegar. I hope she doesn't get too mad at me for this. It says to spray it on, but I don't have a spray bottle handy, so I'm just going to pour it on. And then I will use a paper towel to kind of brush it around in place. seems to want to just go everywhere and then you're supposed to sprinkle a bit of baking soda over the top of it and this is solid as a rock okay well this is some old baking soda we had out in the RV that we brought in Maybe I should have put it down first and then put the other on top of it. Eh, yeah, we'll try that. I have no idea how old this stuff is. To be honest, it was actually with the RV when we bought it. Bear in mind, we only bought the RV a couple of months ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm trying to hit it really well with this, then we'll let that soak up some vinegar when we try this one more time here. And the last step in this was actually to uh, put a warm cloth over it. Mm. Oh, nothing there. And I don't know what Ruby would do if I messed up one of her cloths, so I'm just gonna use a warm paper towel. So let's leave this for 10 or 15 minutes. Now, the good news is you have the luxury of me pausing for the duration of that. So I'll get back to you in 10 or 15 minutes. And we're back. We're about 14 minutes in. Close enough. It says 10 to 15. Okay. Because the baking soda was old, could be because I didn't spritz on the vinegar. I don't know. Could just be because it's been on here too long. It did clean a bit, but 
not really a great job. Uh, oh well. I'll get back to you on that. And we'll get back to our cooking video this, well, for today, here in just a few minutes. All right, and we're back. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a Baja style spicy beef smash burger, sort of. Eh, we're going to modify it just a little bit. Anyway, for example, I'm going to grill the inside of the buns. Um, it's an easy enough trick and it makes almost any sandwich taste much, much better. So we're going we're gonna to go that route. And four buns. We've got these designer buns. Uh, I don't know. They're like uh, more of a high-end sort of thing. I have no idea what kind of bread it is. More of a wheat bread smell. And then we have just plain old regular hamburger buns. Uh, and if you're wondering, yeah, I'll do the designer buns. The boys will do the, uh, the others because, well... They tend to complain about anything, so that's right up their alley. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the big tricks on this is when you're grilling it, grill it with butter and grill it with a lot of butter, okay? Oh, before we get too far here. Okay, that's for our first clue word of this video, which will be balloons. That's right, B-A-L-L-O-O-N-S, balloons. Okay, anyway, back to the, uh, <laughs> the video. Uh, doing this is really quite simple. Um, you want it pretty high heat because you're not actually cooking anything. You're just trying to crisp up the outside edge with a whole bunch of butter. Now, this is a big pan, so I should be able to get four in here at a time. And <clears throat> something that helps a lot, I think anyway, is as soon as you take your cheese or take your, your bread out, go ahead and throw the cheese on it. Similar to with the bread, the boys were, they were just on a plain old sliced processed American cheese. That's what they know on burgers, that's what they like on burgers. As for me, I'm going with uh, pepper jack cheese, which, well, go figure, I also know and like it on burgers. Okay, our butter's melted. All we want to do is soak up a whole bunch of that butter and get a nice golden brown grill going on. Push down on your buns just a little bit, help them soak that up and spin them just a bit. You can check just by looking at it and seeing if it's got a nice you know, wet look all over like that. Take just a minute or three for that to really, well, no, not literally, I'm sorry, 
It'll take maybe a minute for that to really do what you want it to. <laughs> oh, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. And here's where I'll go ahead and throw that on there. Now, interestingly, uh, on a burger, you want to put the sauce on the bottom bun. The reason for that is that's where your, tea, your tummy is. So, you know, that's the part you really want to get the flavor of the sauce. Okay. And for the other two buns. Okay, and then we'll throw it back up there. Mm -hmm. Close up the butter. Yep. Okay. We'll set that aside. Turn that off for a few minutes. Try and get our cheese. Again, sauce is going on the bottom, so we'll put the cheese on the top bun. Okay, and I will get back with you in just a moment. Okay, now we're going to mix a little bit of stuff into our, our burgers here. This is panko, I mean, basically this is just a filler, pretty much. Got a little bit of flavor that it's adding to it. Um, Um, speaking of which, a good way to make your your hamburger go a lot farther is you can add crackers, um, sky flakes, or, or pita, or whatever, um, or bread, anything like that. It, uh, it'll make it go quite a bit farther. You don't want to do more than, say, 30%, maybe a third maximum. Because then you're, you're just ending up with more bread than anything. Um, this is just a little bit of ranch seasoning. And to be honest, it's totally an experiment. I have no idea how it's going to affect it. But just on a whim. Eh, always need a bit of salt and pepper in there though. <laughs> I like a lot of pepper. Okay, and just a pinch of salt. Okay, then we're just going to knead it, fold it over on itself until everything's mixed in well. What? While we're doing that, oh, we will go ahead and turn the heat back on. We're gonna go with a medium high heat. And yes, the butter's still in there, but I went ahead and added just a little bit of 
olive oil to it too. Both flavors will be represented there. Of course, the butter is already in the bun, but no big deal. Okay. So, once we folded this over eh, four or five times, it should pretty much have absorbed most everything here. Also, your bread will absorb a little bit of the grease that comes out of the burgers when they're cooking. So it kind of keeps that extra fat and flavor in your food. So it's not just being cheap, it's also being smart about it. Okay, now then, the heat's going over there. I'm going to divide this in two. Mm, about right there. And then we're going to divide this in two as well. Okay. Now, me, I like a nice thick burger, but I can live with a thin one. The boys, they tend to go for thin burgers. And that's what happens when you're stuck with McDonald's for 90% of your hamburgers. Patting them out into patties, trying to do them about the right size for the buns. And that reminds me, the boys' buns are a little bit smaller, so it looks like theirs are going to be a little thicker anyway. Fortunately, it's not too big of a deal. If the burger hangs over the edge of the bread. Actually, a lot of people really like that, so. Yeah, we'll go a little bit lopsided on this one. figured it out yet. And I gotta rinse all this grease off of my hands. The dish soap is much, much more effective than the hand soap, so go with that. Pull these up towards the center where the heat is. Okay, for anyone who is wondering, uh, I just used uh, a little less than half a kilo of uh, beef for this, but still makes four good sized burgers. Aye, aye. Yeah. If you just want like two good sized burgers, 10 ounces is just fine. Hmm. I can't help but feel like this should be a little hotter. By this time, they should have already got a bit of a char to them. Yeah, nice.
Now, you get a lot of people who argue over do you press it or do you not? And to be honest, my position is press it, just not hard. The reason I press it a little bit is just to see how much red comes up through it. That's an easy way to tell if it's cooked all the way or not. Second clue word. Pop. P O P. Mm -hmm. Give that a couple more minutes there. Okay. I'm going to bring my popping over here butter out of the way. You know what? Just for fun. I want to throw the jalapenos. Yeah, these are really hard to find, but we got some good hot peppers. That'll do, I suppose. And this gives us the Baja part of the whole Baja. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the video's been in the wrong place the whole time. They're cooking away. I've just been throwing jalapenos in the hot grease over here. I'll get them out in just a moment. I'm about to top the, uh, the bun. I'll call it tomato one each. One tomato is sufficient for the boys. I'll take a couple myself. We do have some lettuce in the refrigerator and everything. Let's over some salad. They may pull that out and use that. Um, okay, the last thing on the list here would be a bit of guacamole. When I told the boys they, or asked them if they wanted it, they were like, oh, goodness, no, that stuff is horrible. And then I told them they had already been eating it, and they realized that it actually tastes very good. Okay. Nice. Trying to dig the uh, jalapenos out now. Now I cored the jalapenos, so it's just the uh, the ring basically. It's gonna be nice and spicy, but not overly spicy. Uh, the vast majority of your taxation is in the seeds. For the boys, I'm just going to put one small one on there. And these are not too terribly hot by themselves, but it'll add a little bit of heat. For mine, I'll put several. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Mm 
Okay. Now, I'm going to add one more thing to this. Since they're Baja burgers, I'm adding some Baja sauce. Just a bit. To make it interesting. Okay, and I'll get you back in just a minute for the taste testing. See you in a few. And we're back. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, we have the burger connoisseur, Zabby. He is a huge fan of burgers. We'll let him smash it and take a bite. It's his Baja Smash Burger. Tyler, feel free. Don't do it too hard. Not too hard. Okay. How's it taste? Yeah, it seems to be in some sort of a chewing fit. I'm, I'm not really sure what to make out of that. Okay. Out of 10, what do you got? 10. 10. Okay. Tyler? 5. You don't like them, huh? Yeah. Oh. Once again, Tyler doesn't like them. Oh, well. Oh, hey. Before I get a mouthful of food, I'm going to give that last clue word, okay? And for anybody not paying attention, last clue word is here. H-E-R-E, -E, here. Okay, let me give it a go here, and I'll get right back with you. It sure is. Um, it's a pretty good burger. Not the best one I've ever had, but pretty good. Better than most. I'll say about a seven and a half, maybe an eight. So there we have it for the day, and we're done. Bye bye. See you next time.